The next match is the handicap match. We got evolution on one side, taking on the rock and sock connection. Um, this had quite the build here. Uh, backstage, we see Lillian Garcia talk to McFoley, who's wrestling his first match in four years. And the rock shows up rock does a promo about finally being back in New York. And, uh, then we show hurricane and Rosie and he calls them the Hamburglar and uh, grimace. Uh, we see Jimmy Snuka and Don Morocco, and, uh, it's a big moment. The crowd goes bananas when he, uh, when he comes into the arena, this is a big deal to see the rock. Now, one of the big stars in Hollywood come back and wrestle a match. And he's across the ring from one of his childhood heroes, Ric Flair. They get plenty of time too. Uh, evolution, pick up the win over rock and Foley in 17 minutes and three seconds. Meltzer would say flair was in WrestleMania shape. And here's the real life backstory. This is directly from the observer. When rock was a kid, he used to say, when I grow up, I want to be like my dad, but if I can't be like my dad, I want to be like Ric flair. Rock was just mimicking flair strut and having fun doing all the flair spots. Foley even did the elbow off the apron on flair after flair had taken a backdrop on the floor. Foley looks to have lost around 50 pounds down to 285. So he wouldn't be in bad shape for his return. Batista went, Batista went to work on the rock. But Batista still doesn't get it. But since everyone else does this in the match, it wasn't a factor. Uh, Flair got slammed off the top, and Jerry Lawler was treating this all like it was comedy. Yeah, I didn't Foley like that. Did, and Foley did well. Uh, Flair even did a people's elbow tease. Rock did the elbow on Flair and Rock bottom on Orton, but Flair saved. Batista hit the demon bomb on Rock, and Orton went for the pin, but Rock kicked out. That got us a hot tag to Foley, who did a double arm DDT on Orton and pulled out Mr. Socko. But before he could do it, Orton beat him to the punch with an RKO and a pin. The crowd went nuts for Foley after the match anyway. Uh, he did the old Hogan after the Warrior match, three and three-quarter stars. You had a comment when I said uh, Lawler was treating it as comedy. Who didn't like that? Me. Okay. I didn't think it fit. Yeah. And I don't say that about Jerry often. I mean, it wasn't like it's egregious and it's horrible. It didn't ruin the match. But I know those guys are serious in their preparation. And the match was strange because it was a handicap match. It was three on two. And so I understand the theory of putting the baby faces in jeopardy. And you did that in this match of rock and, and, uh, Mick, uh, with the one man advantage. It's like a power play goal in hockey. So, uh, I, I, I wasn't overwhelmed with the setup of that match. I mean, you could have had a tag match and had still had the third uh, member of evolution at ringside, which is like an angle alert, but to three guys, you know, it, it was, I liked the match quite frankly, but you're right. You know, the audience wanted to see rock. He had, he had left the nest, become even a bigger star. He was in great shape. He always had it still does this very day. If he came back and wrestled again, he'd still have it. So, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. I just thought it was a little bit left-handed as the old timers say with a three on two handicap match. But as I recall, Conrad, we didn't have access to, uh, rock a lot leading into that WrestleMania. Now, the good news is we didn't need to have everybody knew he didn't need to be on a lot of TV, but right. it was a, it wasn't typical of a build up to WrestleMania match because of his unavailability, uh, of, uh, you know, being able to be at raw every Monday night type thing. Let's talk about, uh, some news and notes from this match and the, the weeks leading up to WrestleMania flair had been working with an yet undiagnosed neck injury and a variety of back issues. He had a cat scan and MRI done earlier in the month, but both were inconclusive about what he had going on. Uh, but they were speculating. It might be a severely pinched nerve. And Batista said of this match, the rock was making his big baby face come back and he kind of forgot his comeback. He's kind of just hitting me and going, what is it? I remember him <laughs> saying that to me. It was just so funny. He kind of broke character. He's in character, but he's talking to me at the same time. We're in the middle of this big baby face comeback. And the guy's asking the rookie, what the hell's going on? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fantastic. Uh, I liked this spot. I know that there's been some criticism about Foley coming back. And I know Foley was really hard on himself and his performance here. I think Austin, uh, even told him the truth afterwards and said that wasn't very good. 
Uh, Foley was disappointed in his performance, but I know rock was excited about working with flair and this was a nice story and a nice, uh, I guess added attraction. I like the placement on the card. I think this match gets a bad rap. What say you? Uh, yeah, kind of, I think people had the same feelings I did. It's just strange to have the handicap match. Yeah. Uh, you can see what's happening a mile away and I don't know if that's always a very good scenario. Uh, I didn't hate the match at all. I mean, is loaded with star power. My God, Conrad, you got Ric Flair and the rock in, in the same match and Madison square garden at WrestleMania. How bad can a damn thing be? Yeah. And how so, beloved was Foley here by this New York crowd? My goodness. And so at the end of the day, you know, Steve being very blunt and Steve you know, was a great friend and known Mick since the Dallas days. Uh, he was just being honest in his opinion. Yeah. But, uh, I thought that when Mick left at the end of the match and the match concluded and he lost the fall, the people didn't care. That's right. They got to see him. They loved him. He's beloved, a beloved character. Mick had worked hard on, on losing some excess weight. Uh, and so the audience was ready to see him, but when you throw a hall of famer, like Mick Foley and a hall of famer, like Ric Flair and, and of course the great one, uh, and the young Randy Orton, who's obviously going to be a hall of famer, uh, Batista was kind of along for the ride. Great rub for, for Dave. It put him in a rarefied air scenario, at least for that point in time and indicated bigger things to come. I don't know how that match could have been horrible with all that star power. Again, I refer back and your honor. I will rest my case by saying this match had Ric Flair, the rock and Mick Foley uh, in it. I challenge you to tell me how that can be come up with a bad scenario or bad verdict. So, uh, but I, I, I enjoyed that match. I enjoyed seeing rock back out there. I enjoyed seeing the real gleam in the eyes of talents that still loved what they did for a living or a, a vocation advocation, wherever it may be. So I, the, you could tell the gleam in the eyes, you know, of course, Mick was very emotional as he is a lot and he, cause he cares. So I, I, uh, I know no bitches from me about that match other than I still felt weird that it was a handicap match. Didn't understand exactly why. And the reason it was exactly the exactly why for me is the fact that, uh, you know, the, the, we didn't have rock to, to get us through the buildup and shoot the angles. And we should have had a lot of heat on rock and Foley going into this thing. Yeah. And then they got to wrestle three guys of all of of, uh, you know, that significance and it was great for how, what kind of rub you think Randy Orton and Dave Batista got with Nate and the fact that they won the match. So I, I, I think a lot of good things happened and were achieved in that match. And, uh, I don't have no issue with the three and a half stars whatsoever. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.